stem cell therapy has been something that has been a topic of interest for neurologists for a while. Um, there are kind of many ways to go about it. There's many different types of stem cell therapy that are out there. Um, we just kind of saw anecdotally that in our clinics that there were patients that started asking us about the therapy itself and where to get it from. Um, I think it's slowly been building up over the last few years. And so what we wanted to do was kind of investigate the phenomenon um, and take it from an anecdotal experience to something that was a little bit more uh, scientific, I guess. Um, so what we, what we wanted to do was, like I said, the stem cell tourism is a uh, notoriously difficult subject to study because it's not regulated, there's no database that we can access to try to figure out what exactly is going on in these clinics. So we thought the best way to go about it was to survey academic neurologists and see what their experience has been in the outpatient setting. Um, and then the next thing we wanted to do was try to figure out what the complication rate was because we don't know that. And then lastly, we wanted to see whether or not neurologists would find some sort of educational tool or resource helpful that they can point their patients to when they are asked about stem cell therapy. Um, it's definitely a prevalent issue. 91% uh, of our respondents had at least one patient that came up and asked about it. 65% of them had had patients that, at least one patient that had already done um, so we think that are fairly alarming numbers, that they're, it's already happening, whether or not we had known about it. Um, so the, once we identified that it's something that we're being asked about, we said, well, what kind of results are these patients seeing? In terms of, and we were particularly interested in complications. So 25% of our respondents said that there was some type of complication. Most commonly, it was some variation of an infection, like either a meningitis, encephalitis, or hepatitis C. Um, some people reported tumors, spinal cord tumors, that were growing as a result of these uh, stem cell therapies. And then other things like MS deterioration or relapse and um, stroke were kind of things that we saw. Um, it was very difficult for us to interpret uh, the kind of results where we said that maybe it helped because I think what a lot of these, like, you know, clinics, they, when they advertise these therapies, they say that, you know, 97% cure rate or something like that. It's very difficult for us to interpret those kind of improvements because a lot of these patients are on disease-modifying therapy for MS anyway. So it's very difficult for us to know what exactly is working here. Um, so that was definitely something that we um, thought was difficult to interpret, and so we kind of kept the focus of our questioning on complication rate. And then we asked whether or not it was helpful to have some sort of educational resource. And so 73% uh, of our respondents said that it would be helpful for them. Um, so where we're going to kind of take the study next is to see whether or not um, we can talk to international organizations like academic societies like AAN or Actrams and see whether or not we can come up with some sort of position statement. And so um, when our patients ask us about this, we have a place that we can refer our patients to. Um, so that was definitely something that I think that was meaningful that came out of this study, and we have a direction in which to take it.